What's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab. And what we're going to talk about in this video is lens adapters. And specifically, I'm using the Sony A7R and I have the Metabones 3 electronic lens adapter. And I also have a Photodiox non electronic lens adapter. This is just passive. So I can use this adapter on the camera and hook the lens up, but I won't have any electronic control. So I won't be able to control the aperture, uh, image stabilization won't work, and autofocus won't work. So this will allow the lens to work, but it'll be stuck at wide open f4. Um, so it's kind of cool and it's affordable, but this one is fully electronic, the Metabones 3, and it allows for image stabilization, autofocus, and aperture control. So in combination with the full frame A7R, that's just a killer combo, and uh, it works really well on this particular lens. So I wanted to show you real-world actual focus speed tests, and right now this is really low light, but we're in, we're in uh, the camera's filming at f4 ISO 3200, just so you can get an idea of how dark it is. So I'll be doing some focus testing in this light um, with uh, several different lenses. I have the 24 to 105 I'm going to try, and I want, I'm going to show you how quickly it focuses and locks on with the Metabones 3. So in case you have Canon EF lenses and you're thinking about maybe picking up one of these bodies, you know, it's like, eh, the body might be worth it, but buying $1,000 ice lenses might not. So you can buy one of these adapters for $300, $400, and then you can use your existing high-quality Canon glass and get killer results. So I have a Canon F2L 135 lens. So this is 135 millimeter, and it's F2, so it's really fast. So the focus throw is going to be pretty far. So I'll show you how this performs, you know, in the lab. I'll set up some stuff. And then I also have a Minolta lens. Um, this is a Minolta 50mm f1.4. And I have a lens adapter. This is just a passive lens adapter. But that's okay because this is a passive lens. The aperture, you know, is manual and the focus is only manual. And this is a really cheap rainbow imaging adapter. It was like $18. Um, you know, I haven't had any problem and it works great but there are much better adapters. The higher quality adapters will give you more accurate infinity focus. This adapter does not give you accurate infinity focus, just so you know. A lot of people ask me that. All right, so this is the 24 to 105. And you can see there, it locks on, and I've got a lens behind it. It's struggling with that. Got it that time. So you can see how that Zeiss lens in the background is a little bit harder. Not as much contrast for it to focus on. Now we'll go back to this guy. The first time it'll just focus and the second time it'll lock on. Let's try this one. There it is. So it's extremely low light and there's just not much contrast at all on that lens. There's just that little white Zeiss tag. So I wanted to make sure that it was something difficult to focus on so you guys can see it fail. But if it's something easy like this, you can see it's relatively fast. It's not bad at all. All right, so let me put a different lens on, on here. And again, this is the 24 to 105. I'm gonna put a different lens on the A7R and show you how that lens performs in comparison. All right, so now I got the Canon 135 F2L lens. And I'll show you how it focuses on this guy here. It works pretty good. It's pretty darn fast. Go over to the Zeiss lens. And you can see that's pretty fast. Nails it. Go back to this guy. It's pretty quick. It's a little bit faster than the 24 to 105. And again, I'm at F4. So let me try it at F2. All right, so now I got the 70 to 200 f2.8 L lens on there, and I'll show you how that focuses. This is at 200 millimeter, and it does a pretty good job with a still subject. Moving target, this is not as easy. I must tell you, with a still subject though, it's pretty darn good. Alright, zoom out a little bit. 
Try it again. It's at F2.8, ISO 6400. See, it's very, very low light. There we go. So this lens works pretty good too. All right, so now I got the Minolta lens on there, the 1.4 50 millimeter. And I also have focus peaking enabled. Let me show you how to enable that real quick in case you don't have it. If you go into your menu and you go to the gear option, um, you wanna make sure this option is enabled here, release without lens. That's enabled by default, but just in case it's not, that's where that option is. That's because I'm using fully manual lens here and a manual adapter, passive adapter. So you have to have this option enabled in order to shoot that way. So here on number two is where your peaking level is. I have mine set to low. You can raise that up to medium if you want to see more of it. Uh, low gives you a little bit more finer detail, and I prefer that method. I also like using yellow. Uh, works pretty good. And that's how I have that set. So now when we, when we look at this, you can actually see on the glasses there the focus peaking. You can see when I start to focus right on the eyes. And if you want to zoom in, default is the C1 button. So you just hit the C1 button, and then you hit the center button. And then you can zoom in and just fine tune your focus. And you can get the eyeballs there. Just like that, looks pretty good. And there you go. And now I'll turn it over here to the Zeiss, and I can just adjust the focus. Look for the focus peaking. See if I could see it. See a little bit there. And then I'll do the zoom in and I'll just toggle over to the right and then hit the center button and it looks pretty sharp. You can see the Zeiss logo there. It's pretty close. Right there. Boom. So that's how you do the focus peaking and manual focusing with, you know, fully manual. And that's what this is, the fully manual setup. I know it's hard to see, but the Minolta lens is really nice. Alright guys, that's pretty much it for this video tutorial. I hope you got something out of this and I'll catch up with you later.